can I possibly say about Rome that's not been said before? It's a city, an historical center, a place of great art and culture, and even a personal identity for many, and a city that has existed for thousands of years. It's the home of great thinkers, philosophers, and artists for millennia. The Eternal City, as it's so often called, La Città Eterna. Personally, I find myself constantly drawn to Italy and to Rome. As an American and more so as a New Yorker, I have a strange relationship with history. I come from a country that is still in its turbulent adolescence, in a city that in many ways is as quintessentially modern as it can get. I have no ancestral roots in Italy or Rome, no historical connection, and yet I feel deeply connected to it. I've read countless history books, listened to podcasts, watched documentaries, even learned to speak passable Italian in an attempt to understand this innate pull towards Italy that I've somehow felt for years. I find Rome to be one of the most beautiful, photogenic cities in the world. I've traveled to Rome three times in the past six years, and on each trip, I've fallen further in love with her. And my work has evolved with each of those trips. For me, this love isn't about food or art, although they certainly are a factor in the overall experience of traveling to Rome. But rather, this video is about how Rome completely ignites my photography each time I visit. My eyes see differently, my camera work is just a little bit better, the light works just a bit more in my favor when I'm in Rome. I think we all have places where it somehow just clicks for us for whatever reason. To me, that's Rome. You know, there are, there are places in the world, or even our own cities, where somehow our breathing sinks with the environment, where our pace levels out and perfectly matches that of the city, where our heart somehow beats just a little bit differently. For me, that place is Rome. It's a street photographer's paradise and probably my favorite place to photograph. It's a city of deep tradition and history, but one that I seem to connect with through the modern lens of my camera. And maybe it's the simplicity of how I approach making my street photography. The longer I've been making this kind of art, the less gear I use, the fewer tricks I employ, and the more straightforward my approach. One prime lens, one camera. I mostly use my beloved Leica M10R and a 28mm f2 prime lens, which is what all of the photos in this video were made with. I keep my camera simply around my neck, or maybe wrapped around my wrist if I'm feeling jaunty. No camera bag. I mostly shoot using the rules of Sunny 16. I set my ISO to 400, my shutter to 1 500th of a second, and off I go. I use my aperture and the light of the sky to dictate my exposure. No automatic modes allowed. I keep the screen on the back of the camera turned off. I mostly don't review my photos throughout the day. I want to be fully in the moment. I want to be plugged into the city and its people. And Rome increasingly has rewarded me in this simplicity of approach. My hands know what to do faster than any automatic motor autofocus could. That magic allows me to make photos like this one, which is perhaps one of the best photos I've ever made. It happened in a split second out of the corner of my eye. I saw this young boy kicking a ball in an alleyway. I could hear the sound of the ball bouncing off of the wall as I approached the alley. And I turned in that fraction of a second, my hands intuitively knowing where to focus the lens, as I pulled it up to my chest, not even to my eye, and snapped one quick frame without breaking my stride as I walked past the alley. His play was never interrupted. He never even knew that I was there. And the photo to me feels timeless and utterly beautiful. And so maybe I spend my first day photographing in El Centro, like where that photo was made, reorienting myself with some architectural masterpieces, working my way through the crowds at the Pantheon, Campo de Fiori, or Trevi Fountain, looking for the human moments that frame and punctuate scenes. It's rarely about the postcard views for me anymore. I mostly leave those to the talented cityscape photographers who are up and out before everyone else with tripods, long lenses, ND filters, and long exposures to capture cities in strange, beautiful isolation. For me, I want the human element. I find myself more connected to my photography practice when it's just me, my camera, and 30,000 steps a day following the stream of the day as it flows one direction and then the next. It could be an early morning indulging myself with a tour of one of the main archaeological sites, Castel Sant'Angelo, and how the low light inside the walls of a tomb, combined with a slow shutter, can create visual chaos. Chaos as we climbed upwards inside the ancient brick walls, reflecting its turbulent history and channeling the chaos of the men and women who've run up those ramps for so many years and centuries before us. 
or climbing its battlements and terraces, taking an espresso with views of the city, framing the Vatican through turret holes, or encountering some of those infamously inquisitive Roman seagulls. Maybe it's afternoon, walking along and across the river in Trastevere, enjoying the quieter, village-like atmosphere of its vine-lined streets, and discussing pizza with a handsome and chatty waiter who is thrillingly surprised that this Reddit American can speak un po' d'italiano. Or maybe it's waking up to a very rainy morning and escaping the crowds of the centro and venturing into Monti, Prati, or Ludovisi. I look for the spectacular light that Rome offers in the late afternoon and evening when the sun moves to the west and sets behind Basilica San Pietro. Like on this bright first afternoon in Rome, when the intense light of the sun illuminated the streetlights in broad daylight along Via della Consolazione so intensely that against the shadows of the buildings lining the street itself, they look like lights on an airfield, guiding our eyes to landing at San Pietro in the near distance. Or I relish those two days of constant rainfall that drives many from the streets, but me into them with a hat, coat, and an umbrella to brave the elements. The rain slicks the streets in cobblestones as the men cover their heads and hats to keep the rain off of their faces. The umbrellas of people in the ancient streets drawing silhouettes and shapes of darkness against the cloudy grays of the rainy sky. I look for the moments that feel like they're from another era, like the gentleman in a fedora gently walking his elegant elderly mother by the arm under his umbrella into a chic trattoria for lunch. Rome has a way of providing these moments in a way that never feels trite or cliche. It's just who she is. She doesn't have to pretend. I savor how the rainfall reflects the muted afternoon light during a shower and isolates a motorbike speeding by me as though it were in its own cloud of light. And then later, when I see it on my laptop, marveling that I've somehow learned through so much practice how to make a photo like that without any autofocus. And then setting out to test and repeat my new skill on various Vespas and scooters throughout the city for the rest of the trip. I look for serendipitous moments of pairs of people wearing similar expressions, or accessories, or for the shapes of homogenous figures creating visual poetry and geometry, like in this photo of the nuns walking past the start of Ponte Sant'Angelo at the foot of Castel Sant'Angelo, and how there's a wave-like pattern created by their habits, and how they move uniformly in the opposite direction of the angel, who isn't even looking at them, but rather off into the distance at something else that maybe we've yet to see. Nuns and priests are an easy subject in Rome, and yet one I find fascinating. I'm not a religious person, but I am spiritual. I've never taken to the rules and conformity imposed upon so many by formalized religion, but it's the presence of both in Rome, the dichotomy of its spiritual center against its commercial industries that I find so fascinating. I see it reflected in my work throughout Rome, Maybe because nowhere else in the world is there such a concentration of religious professionals just going about their days as residents and as pilgrims and as tourists. Some of them just happen to work at the Vatican, so their commute looks a little different. My photography in Rome is me looking for a hint of what life is like to live in Rome, in a city with such history, but also incredibly overrun with and dependent upon mass tourism. What must it be like to play? To get older. To commute. To work in a city so old and beautiful. In Rome, I allow myself to embrace my desire to connect with history, to understand my small place in the bigger picture, and to make work that reflects that curiosity.